Oh, hi. Here we are again. Quarter past 7pm again. What is going on? And you'll see. Eli knows. I've worked late. You can see the tie. <laughs> so, um, yeah, here we are for another little bit bing, 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 of Garth Nix, Drowned Wednesday, book three of the Keys to the Kingdom series. So, hang on, I'm just having a bit of wire issue down around the old legs. There we go. If you remember, last night when we were here, uh, Arthur was talking to the rats, and then the rats explained, didn't they, that uh, Leaf had had her court proceedings that morning, and they explained that, hang on, I'll use the exact quote, which will make it better. Oh no, I've got to do that rat voice again, haven't I? The cart was held this morning. Before Captain Swell chose to sail away, Miss Leaf was charged with being a stowaway. <laughs> I know. What happened to her? With a potential punishment being a death sentence for a mortal, I was acutely aware of the stakes. However, what happened? Is she... And that's where we left it, didn't we? With the old ellipsis. Ugh, I hate a, a chapter ending with an ellipsis. Come on. It's like an episode of a, of a soap opera. Dum, 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 dum. Remember that one? The old EastEnders soap opera? That always ended on an ellipsis as well. But anyway, we'll pick it up on chapter 16 and we'll see if we get any idea what has happened to Leaf. Here we go. Oh, it starts off with that rat voice. No, 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 she's not dead, replied Monkton, but she has been pressed. <laughs> <laughs> pressed, Arthur exclaimed. What do you mean? Like, crushed? He couldn't believe it. Whipping was bad enough, but to be pressed flat. No, no, pressed, as in forcibly enlisted, said Monkton. I were able to prove that she did not go aboard the flying mantis of her own will, so she was not a stowaway, but she were not a passenger either, nor a distressed sailor. Ultimately, the only thing she could be was one of the crew. So she was pressed into service as a ship's boy. Ship's girl, said Arthur. Ship's boy, said Monkton. They are always called ship's boys, even when they're girls. There are plenty of both. There are plenty of both a book. Excuse me, <laughs> told you, working late. There are plenty of both aboard the ships of the border sea. Though, apart from your friend Leaf, they're all Piper's children, of course, and therefore our brethren. We help one another where we may. But what's going to happen to her? It's a hard life, but the Mantis is a well-found ship and a fair one. Your friend might work her way up, become an officer, even captain her own ship sometime. Mortals learn much faster than denizens, so there's no knowing where she'll end up. But she won't want to be a ship's boy. She has to get home. She has a family and friends. She's signed the ship's articles, Longtail reported. There's no break in them. Except, oh, except executive order from Drowned Wednesday, corrected Monkton. So I could release her once I get the will or to make me master of the border sea or duke or whatever it is. Both rats nodded in agreement. They didn't seem surprised that Arthur was planning to assume control of the border sea. I suppose Leaf will be safe enough on board the Mantis, Arthur said in a hopeful tone. She's probably better off than he was being out of trouble, being out of the trouble he was heading into, but still he wished he'd reached the triangle earlier and could have helped Leaf get off the ship and go home. I'll have to check, he thought. <laughs> With the mirror and the shell. She'll be safer than most at sea, for the Mantis is a good ship. But there's always storm and rack, said Monkton. And pirates, added Longtail. The shiver has been sighted too often in recent times for my liking, not to mention some of Feverfew's lesser brethren, such as Captain Bloodreg of the Night Dream. That's why I'm here, kind of. I need to find Feverfew's secret harbour and I need to go in there and get something. I must ask for your help. We are mercantile rats, said Monkton. That is to say, we do not do anything without payment of some kind. 
do you actually know where Fever Fuse Harbour is? Or can you find out fairly quickly? I mean, there's no point talking about payment if you can't do anything. We think we know where it is. That is to say, we have deduced its location from some evidence, but we have not actually been there ourselves. As for getting you there, if we're right, then that's an even more difficult proposition. OK. What payment do you want for the location, to start with? We deal in information, so if we answer your questions, we'd like you to answer an equivalent number of hours. Arthur had been expecting to pay a ransom in gold or treasure. This seemed too easy. Is that all? he asked. That may be more than it seems, Longtail advised. Arthur shrugged. I ain't got anything to hide. At least, I don't think I've got anything to hide. Then you shall ask three questions of us, and we shall ask three of you. There's no trick to this, is there? Arthur asked suspiciously. I mean, what if I just... What I just asked doesn't count as a question, does it? Because I'm not agreeing to that. Only significant questions count. So, you want to know what we know about Feverfuse Secret Arbour? Yes, that's my first question. Where is it? In response, Longtail unrolled a very large map that took up most of the table. It was labelled the Border Sea and was nearly all blue water with occasional small flecks of land, each neatly marked in a tiny cursive script. <clears throat> Arthur looked over the map eagerly, taking in place names like Port Wednesday, the Triangle, Mount Last and Swirling Deep. At first glance, he couldn't see anything labelled Fever Fuse Secret Harbour, so he went back to the top left to start to the top left corner to start a systematic search up and down, only to be interrupted as Longtail carefully placed a small ivory carving of a white whale on the map and tapped it twice. It's there. We believe Fever Fuse Secret Harbour must actually be inside Drowned Wednesday. Inside her? More exactly, we believe the Secret Harbour is a miniature world that is anchored inside Drowned Wednesday's stomach. It can be accessed in only two ways. One is via a unique augury puzzle that Feverfew possesses made for him by Grim Tuesday, like the world itself. The other, directly from Wednesday's stomach. But it can't be inside her, said Arthur. She returned to her normal human form. How could a whole Secret Harbour be in her stomach. I am not a meta I am not a metamathic sorcerer, said Longtail, but I believe the explanation is something like this. The secret arbor is contained within a bubble of the secondary realm that has been brought into the house. The size of that bubble may change from minuscule to gigantic without affecting the world it contains. When Lady Wednesday used the third key to return to her former shape, the bubble shrank with her. When she grew again, it grew, but the world inside the bubble did not change. <laughs> and you can get into Wednesday's stomach. We believe so, or out of it. We think fever if you went the world sorcerously placed inside Wednesday for two reasons. It would be the ideal hiding place, but also would provide unparalleled opportunities for recovering salvage. You are aware that anything lost always turns up eventually in the border sea. Arthur nodded. He'd been told that by Sunscorch. A great part of what is lost lies in the very deep and is unrecoverable, unless it floats up before it sinks to one of the places where the sea now impinges upon nothing and is dissolved. But there is still considerable salvage in shallower water when with it, along with everything else in Wednesday's path, it ends up in her stomach, at least for a time. Feverfew uses his slaves to harvest the salvage Wednesdays swallowed, adding greatly to the plunder he takes from the ships of the border sea. I don't know how much longer I can maintain these rat voices. How do you know all this? One of the advantages granted us by the Piper is the ability to return to our former shape and size for a time, said Monkton. It's unpleasant and potentially dangerous should we forget that we are raised, but we are able to masquerade as normal rats. One of our number managed to infiltrate the Shiver in this fashion and observe the transition to the secret harbour. While there, she also saw slaves being sent out somewhere. The survivors returning with salvage. 
Later, we deduced the location of that harbour and the nature of the slaves' activities. Captain Longtail, show Lord Arthur the map and the sketches. Longtail took a leather case from under the table, opened it and took out several rolled up pages. He laid these out on the table. The first one was a map drawn in pencil and entitled in large uneven letters, Feverfuse Fever Island. It showed a body of land shaped like a skull. Under the title there was a note that read, the isle is roughly 4,500 double paces long and 3,200 double paces wide. The left eye socket of the skull had Lake Left written on it. The right eye socket was broken and open to the sea. This was labelled Harbour. And there were some smaller notations indicating a jetty, a shipyard, eight warehouses, a dozen large buildings marked as slave quarters and a star-shaped construction called Feverfuse Fort. The nose cavity was labelled as Hot Mud Crater, with a scrawled note underneath that said, Nothing? Down by the skull's jawbone there were lots of squiggly lines described as teeth mountains and followers of the carp escaped slaves. There was sea around the island, but it only extended for about 850 double paces according to the indicated scale, till it met a line marked Extent of Bubble that circled the map. Not far from the harbour mouth near this line there was a narrow peninsula that thrust out into the sea with a dot at the end of it in the inscription Exit to Salvage Grounds. The second page Longtail unrolled showed several rough charcoal sketches. One drawing showed the harbour with half a dozen ships present, one of them easily recognisable as the Shiver. The other ships looked derelict and were all piled up against one another in one corner of the harbour while the pirate Sheena was tied up in the jetty. <laughs> the second drawing showed a line of slaves wearing bizarre looking diving helmets, each of them hobbled with a long chain and equipped with a sack and net. The third drawing was incomplete, a partial scene captured over the shoulder of a pirate who was kneeling on the deck of a ship. He had the lid of a box next to him, the lid illustrated with something that looked like a cross between a squid and a man. The fourth and final drawing showed a line of small mountains or large hills which were covered in thick jungle. The caption underneath the drawing read, Followers of the carp must be escaped slaves. Potential here. How did your spy get back out with these? asked Arthur. Longtail shook his head. She didn't. The map and the drawings came by simultaneous bottle. By what? Simultaneous bottles are a form of communication we developed ourselves with some assistance from certain parties. Essentially, they are pairs of magical bottles. Anything put in one simultaneously appears in the other bottle as well. But they do not work outside the border sea, and they're very expensive to construct, so only our most important agents are equipped with them. Our various vessels also use simultaneous bottles to keep in touch. We have over a hundred simultaneous bottles aboard. So, these two papers were the last thing to come through from your agent with fever for you. Not quite, said Moncton grimly. The last thing to come through before the bottle shattered was a severed tail. So, you see, one gallant rat has already given up her life for this information. This drawing, is it of fever for you himself? It indicated the sketch of the pirate kneeling on the deck. And what's on the lid of that puzzle box? We believe it is fever for you. He was once a mortal man, though changed greatly by sorcery and his long existence in the house. And this drawing shows a man of mortal dimensions. The augury puzzle he is using is not one that is listed anywhere we can find. The creature it portrays is a gore dragon. A rare form of nithlin is very occasionally created when certain lost items within the border sea come in contact with nothing. This suggests the augury puzzle was created from the intestines of a gore dragon, specifically for fever few, which could only have been done by a very superior sorcerer one of the morrow days. Since fever few private bubble was made by Grim Tuesday, it's likely the Grim made the augury puzzle to go with it. Who paid for it to be made? It's another question, which we do not know the answer to. Mm, probably Superior Saturday, said Arthur. That's who Drowned Wednesday went to in the first place, to get his help to return the keys to the will. Her help, said Moncton. Superior Saturday is female. Well, she was, last we heard. Now, I think you'll agree we have answered your first question, so we are now going to ask one in return. Why do you want 
to go to Feverfew's secret arbor. Arthur thought for a moment. There seemed to be nothing to be gained from trying to not answer the question or fudging the answer. He liked the rats. They seemed very straightforward and he knew he would need more of their help. I believe the third part of the will is there. Drowned Wednesday doesn't have it anymore and she says fever if you took it with help from the morrow days. I want to get to the will and release it. Then I can get the third key from Drowned Wednesday, fix her up, get Leaf back and the two lats leaned forward. The two rats leaned forward as Arthur hesitated. Then, then I'm not sure, I guess. I guess I'll need to go back home for a little while to make sure everything's okay. But if I manage to get the third key, I suppose I'll have to work out what to do about Sir Thursday and then just get on with it. That's a generous answer, Arthur. Please, your next question. It's not exactly a question, said Arthur. I need to get to the secret harbour. If there are only two ways in and one of them is Feverfuse Augury Puzzle, it looks like I'm going to have to get in through Wednesday's stomach, which means I have to survive getting swallowed up. The only thing I can think of doing that would be to... The only way I can think of doing that would be to be in a submarine or something like it. I've heard you have lots of strange ships, so my question is this. Do you have a submarine or know where the one is and can I borrow it? Oh, Arthur. Arthur, 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 and his submarine craze. I don't know. <laughs> do you think he's going to do it? Do you think he's going to get in? Who knows? Funnily enough, I was just eating my tea before I came up, my tea time and dinner, before I came up to record the story. I watched last week's episode of Ahsoka on Disney+. Plus. Have you seen Ahsoka yet? Have you watched that one? It's all right. Not my favourite, but it's all right. She got inside one of them sea whales, I can't remember what they're called, mouth, didn't she? This is exactly what is now about to happen in here. <gasps> the world is just all a big coincidence. Whoa, look at that. Anyway, anyway, thank you very much for listening and I'll speak to you all tomorrow. Unless you're waiting around for some waffle. Hello. Uh, so, yeah. So, today. Rainy again today. Re like, properly warm. At, wo <laughs> at work today. Uh, I was sweltering. And I was outside a lot today. But I still sweltered. Maybe, maybe I'm ill. <laughs> but, um, but pouring all at the same time. What an odd day. And now it's absolutely pouring with rain. <laughs> against the window. Is it going to be... Oh, I don't understand this weather. I mean, it's the 20th of September when I'm recording this. It can't make its mind up. 17 degrees C. Heavy rain. I don't know. And then on Monday and Tuesday, back to 22, 23. I don't understand. I just don't. Make your mind up. Weather, make your mind up. Uh, so let's think. What exciting things can I tell you? Um, Blake hasn't called me still Blake if you're watching this and I know you will send me a message or something let me know you're all right you little humbug uh but yeah so I I can like I have him on my maps on my phone so I can see where he is and I can see that his phone at least is in his room in university but yeah I don't know I don't know you just want to know don't you uh what else can I tell you there isn't that much excitement to tell you. Today, Floyd, as in my youngest child, he went on a school visit today and he went to like, it's this near, it's like a nearby Victorian farmhouse, which has been opened up as a museum, but they had the day as a, um, an experience day. And today, because their topic is all about, um, about one of the world wars, they had an experience day of being evacuees so he wasn't very keen on going on it I don't know whether he actually thought that he was gonna have to go and stay with another family or something but um yeah he had to dress up and make himself look the part and then went to this Victorian farmhouse where they all had to line up and then local families chose them to go and work with them he wasn't very keen on that bit but he said that he did have to, <laughs> in the whole role of training to be an evacuee, he did have to attack a sack with a stick. 
<laughs> How random. And um, oh, and another thing that he's told me, he's very tired, so he's just kind of mumbling bits of his day at me at the moment. Uh, another thing that he did, he had to eat a cake. And I don't know how much this is true. I'll have to research my wartime foods. <laughs> but he, he had to eat a chocolate cake made out of potato. <laughs> a chocolate potato cake. I don't, I don't get that one. But so he says, and who knows? Floyd doesn't often tell me untruths. He's one of those guys who are just, boom, straight out there with the truth. And doesn't forget anything either. So, um... Yeah, I'm going to look up chocolate flavoured potato cake. Oh, imagine that. But um, yeah, that was that was the most exciting thing that he's told me. Beat up a sack with a stick because I was training, ate a chocolate potato cake and felt sick. <laughs> or I ate a tea. So uh, yeah, there you go. That's, that's his day. Uh, yeah, and I haven't really got anything exciting to report at the moment. It's just... Like nothing happening in the world of Mr. S, is there? Uh, hopefully, I'll have something exciting to tell you soon. I'm sure I'll have to go on an adventure or something soon that I can tell you about. Right. Okay. On that note of my boredom, <laughs> I'll say goodnight and I'll see you all tomorrow for Thursday. Whoop, whoop.